Good afternoon. Today's subject is neurofibromatosis type 1 or NF1 or wrecking house disease. This information is geared towards educators and parents. During our time together, we will discuss the signs of NF1, the distinguishing characteristics, both physical and developmental, how often NF1 occurs and who does it affect, the cause of NF1, and information and resources for families. If two or more of the following characteristics are present, then, it, then NF1 is confirmed. If there is a family history of NF1, six or more light brown spots on the skin called cafe au lait spots, pea-sized bumps on the skin, enlarged areas on the skin, pigmented bumps on an individual's eye irises, and a tumor on the optic nerve that rarely interferes with the vision. This disorder affects all races, ethnic groups, and males and females. It is the most common genetic disorder in the United States, and one in every 3,000 to 4,000 births are affected by NF1. The cause of NF1 is a new or spontaneous mutation in the sperm or the egg. It is not contagious, so schools do not need to worry about that. It is hereditary disorder. 50% of the cases come from the parents, and it is affected by the chromosome 7. There is also a 50% chance that a child with NF1 will pass this condition to their children. Educators play, pay close attention to this section. It is the developmental characteristics of NF1. There may be learning disabilities in children with NF1. Along with that, 40 to 60 percent of children have short attention spans, which can be caused by attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Visual perceptions and spelling and math difficulties are also common in children with NF1. Some physical characteristics of NF1 are visual impairments, bone deformities, and skeletal abnormalities such as scoliosis, the bowing of the legs, or thinning of the shin bone. Parents, pay close attention to this section. Family members should be aware of the effects of NF1 and on the child who has the disorder. In school, it could cause a child to be teased by their classmates. Parents should talk to their children about NF1 and answer any questions they may have about this disorder. Some resources for the family. The Children Tumor Foundation, Neurofibromatosis Include, the National Organization of Rare Diseases, and Comer Children's Hospital, the University of Chicago. In conclusion, I hope this gave you insight into NF1. Thank you and have a wonderful day.